Now, Gina, I know you think that I picked that song because of what we were talking about off the air. I did. And now and then as it played, I realized why you probably picked it. Why do you think I picked it? Is that song sung by Eric Carmen by chance? It, it is. I and had a he, feeling. Yeah, he passed away. Yeah. Uh, like day before yesterday. A couple days ago. Yeah. Yeah. And I was thinking while we were talking, I was like, you know, I think all by myself. I think he comes in real quick on that. Uh, there's mm. no way I could have gotten my whole spiel out. No, this was better. This but is more no fitting. Way. Yeah. Hungry eyes. We, <laughs> we're talking about eating and all this kind of stuff on this show. Yeah. The man passed away. By the way, when you think about it, Eric Carmen, dead. Yeah. Patrick Swayze. Listen, the guy was lean and mean. He was as lean and as mean. Now, granted, a lifetime smoker. Patrick Swayze? Oh, yeah. The guy would light one cigarette with the other cigarette. I had no idea. He was, but look, that's what people used to do to stay thin. As a matter of fact, back in the day, back in the 70s, I know every time I say this on the show, someone writes to me and goes, dude, that was my mom, or mm. dude, you're making that shit up. But back in the 70s, doctors would tell women after they had babies, you want to lose the baby weight, puff on a few cigarettes. Would you believe that? I have, I, I've had clients tell me that. And if, and if you go, Vinny, you're off the reservation, that's never happened, made up bullshit, that's you just trying to be sensationalizing bullshit. Here's the deal. You go back to the 60s and the 50s, and it was like a dentine commercial. More doctors recommend yep. Tarleton. Yep. More doctors recommend Salem. Hey, the, to the toasted cool tip. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you you want to have that cool feeling on your yeah. throat? Use cool cigarettes. We put menthol in it. And, and, and we're just uh, and just just to be clear, he, they were telling women who just had babies who may or may not be actively breastfeeding to smoke. Oh, absolutely. Well, that was during a time where women. The 70s was a weird time. Um, Gina, you would appreciate this. But the 70s um, did not like the booby. The booby, yeah, the booby. First off, you had uh, Gloria Steinem out there burning bras. Right. A woman could not burn a bra fast enough. <laughs> um, you, you know, Jane Fonda was riding on a tank in Hanoi telling sure. people, you know, and you had uh, Gloria Steinem, they were burning bras. And of course, you had the other one. Who was the the, the orange juice woman? She was like orange the right winger of them all. Yeah, um, um, and I think she did a cross your heart bra thing or whatever. But that um, she was like this beauty queen or whatever. You lived down in Florida. If people think all of this right left stuff started last week, oh god, it, Jane something Jane, Jane. People are yelling at me. They, they're saying it's Jane. Blah blah blah. Oddly enough, I know this isn't who you're talking about, but I put in 1970s orange juice spokesperson, and the funny thing is Anita Bryant comes up. Yeah, that, that's who it is. Anita oh, that's Bryant. who you're talking about? Yes. Anita Bryant. That's yeah, right. I think she was all about wearing the bra and being a lady and doing Indeed. all this stuff. Indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was, um, yeah, Anita Bryant. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she was on one side of the argument, and you had the Gloria Steinem's, and it burn your bra, be a man, go to work, do all this stuff. We had right. a lot of booby talk without mm. actually using the word booby. Right. Right. But that's where we were. And they were telling women, be more like men. You don't have to breastfeed your kid. Again, booby talk. Yeah. Don't breastfeed. And I, I was not breastfed and I asked why. And my mom said, it just wasn't done. They stopped. Well, there you it. go. It like the tits were obsolete. Right. I, I, I'm not making that. I'm not trying to be gross. No, I'm, anything, I'm but telling you. Like women went right back to work. It was like, you do not use those titties to feed that baby. Go back to work, put them on. And you know what they were putting them on? Soy mm. product. You want to know where right. all the problems started with? All the crap. Gina, pull up. Pull up what, what come Now, listen. Hang on. Before I get any deeper into this conversation. Yeah, this is really taking a turn. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get in trouble here. Okay. I know you don't believe that. I'm not kidding. I get it. There are some women who cannot breastfeed. I get it. There are some women who do not produce milk. I get it. There's plenty of reasons it can't be done. And I get that. Yes. And yes, if you guys have to take these steps to do this, I do understand that. 
because whenever I've talked about this on the show, I get in trouble. You don't understand. Not everybody right. can breastfeed. I don't make milk. I tried every, I get Noted. it. That's a medical issue. And I feel for you. I feel for you, mom, are, are the ones that can breastfeed a little bit, can't produce enough milk and this mm -hmm. sort of thing. But with all of the gadgets now for mommies who work, they got the pumps, all this oh, stuff yeah. didn't really exist in, in a major way back when. You can you can actually produce that milk for your kid if you have the pumps and all, except for the ones that can't because right. they have a medical condition. And I'm not saying, but boy, we went we went against the booby like you would not believe. Like you would not believe. It's so interesting because these are two different debates the two sides of the same booby coin, um, which is the actual sexuality of women's breasts and the actual uh, medical life giving necessity of women's breasts. And they were all it was all up for debate at this time. And it was two very different arguments about the exact same thing. I don't think it's I think the word is not sexuality it's the sexualization. of Yeah, the body, yeah. Which is more sexualized in the United States than if you get to Europe. Oh, because it's more, it's more, um, well, titillating, pardon the pun, but it's yeah. just more uh, the salacious. You know, I, you know, Serena, you know, we've been on beaches in, in, you know, Italy, where, you know, no top. Yeah. She comes to America, she wouldn't think about taking oh. her top please. All right, because you, you get, you know, you get arrested. Because all of the Puritans from her country moved here and started our country. Right. Pretty much. <laughs> Cleaned them out. And now yeah. they're here. No, no, no <laughs> boobies on the beach here. Um, but yeah, it, it's an interesting thing how, how all of it works. You know, you, it's sexual. You go to Africa, you go to some of the, some of the countries in the African nation, they don't know the women in some of these areas don't know what a bra looks like. And, the the shirt is an option. Yeah, when they're working, right? rests are merely functional, and right. it's just interesting because you know, good, yeah. bad, right or wrong. It's funny how different cultures see beauty in a different way. It, in to your point, I was just watching a documentary with women with those giant lip plates in African yeah. tribes because it makes them more beautiful, and we're thinking, ah, really? So it is. It is all a construct, but we've been in it so long we don't know the difference. <laughs> Yeah. And not not to get too far off the reservation with this talk. I mean, the 70s was, you know, the, the 60s actually started in the 60s. I mean, yeah. my mom, you know, she had to work. I mean, she wanted to work. She, you know, a lot of the women when she went to get a college degree at 18, it's like, what are you doing? You well, you're getting your MRS degree. Well, you, you either, find yourself exactly. a husband. right, you either and but she was already dating my dad. Mm. And she was like, no, I want to get a degree. I want to go to work. And that was looked down upon in the deep sure. south. A lot of these women were like, no, you stay home and take care of your kids. And right. she didn't breastfeed. You know, we, we, I think she breastfed for like a week or two. And then we went right on the stuff. Yeah. She was like a plantation mom. She would just like have the baby and then go back to picking cotton again. Boy. You know, that kind of thing. And um, that's the thing. I, I could see how the first timers, you know, the first generation of doing that would be that would feel empowering. And now we're like, are you kidding me? What are we? What is this? Are, are we servants? We right. need laws to give us the proper time off. So the pendulum's got to find that middle. Yeah. Yeah. And now, you know, we have some of these laws in place and, and more women are breastfeeding. It's the look, I think it's the better way to go. And once again, I feel for the women. I yeah. got, I'm saying this for the third time. And notice how, because I know the hate mail I'm going to get. I'm, I, I'm not, a, I'm not ignorant to it. I understand it. It's a real thing, and I'm not making light of it. Yeah. I get it. it's a real problem. But every time I talk about it, it's like you made me feel bad because I can't. It's like you know, I, this is not about you. Right. And, and that's, you know, that the, the trend, let's call it is back with a vengeance, you know, cause I have friends yeah. that are in this situation and breast milk is, is called liquid gold. Yeah. And that's, that it just is. So if it can be done, fantastic. But we were all raised on the powdered stuff. I, I don't know if there's an exact correlation. I ain't a doctor. I have more stomach and allergy and sinus problems than the average person should. And I know that there are, there have been studies about linking those things. And we've always kind of joked about it over the years, but as my mom said, it just wasn't done. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's 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 crazy that we you know you're you're at least twenty years younger than me or thereabouts. Sure. So thereabouts. I'm, I'm sitting there going, okay, it was being done in the '60s. You're an '80s baby. In the '80s, and and it, you know it was still being done a lot. Yeah. You yeah. started seeing in the '80s where women started whipping the breast out again. You know, yeah. Was, you would see it in the '80s, but it was more it was of a, a slow huge, turn, it, though. Yeah, yeah it, it took forever. In the '90s, you saw more of it. By the early 2000s, you know, women are in restaurants and whipping them out everywhere. You know. Oh, the funny thing is, with my girlfriends, you you would be shocked to see the contraptions, the newfangled machinery, hands free. There's Bluetooth involved. It's I've never really? it's great. Well, yeah, it's interesting because you can, um, you know, sync it to your app and then you'll know how much milk you have and what you need and that. Da, da, da. So it's Bluetooth. There's like um, two, you know, suction things that that are motorized hands free right. on your bra. I've never you know, because I've never had an infant. I've I've never seen anything like it. It's it's really quite interesting. Yeah, uh, look, more power to them. I mean, when you think about technology and, and this allows women to go to work, women who can breastfeed and, and you know, yeah. save it for later. Yeah. House it in the fr fridge. And and I think, Gina, you may know better than me for women who cannot breastfeed for medical reasons. Mm -hmm. um, there are surrogates. I think you can also get. And yeah, I, don't know I, how, I don't know if that's easy. I don't know if you go on Etsy and find that. I don't know. No, from what I understand, that is as it should be extremely highly regulated, right. um, which it should be. But also there's like mommy groups that, you know, will do that for each other. And, you know, so there's there's ways. Um, but, you know, like Vinny said multiple times now, so please save your hate mail. You got to do what you got to do. And you know what? We all survived. But it's like you want to give your kid a little healthy edge. This is not news. We know this. And, and I asked you to look up just a regular. Uh, did you look anything up there uh, as far as what's in those things? Because I know no, you started talking and then you derailed and never told me what to look up. Uh, I want to look up the ingredients that comes in like a normal kind of like the Similac yeah. or Infamil. Similac, or yeah. yeah, because I do know, you know, every time I do this conversation, once every two or three years, um, people will write to me and go, yeah, there are better versions of that. Meaning in Europe, there are better versions. And I you see. can get some of this stuff from Canada. And, you know, there's a guy over in Peoria and he'll send it to you, you know. Okay, well, here's what we got. And not that I have a memory from birth, but I'm pretty sure this was the stuff I was given. All right, let's see. Non-fat milk, corn syrup solids, lactose, soy oil, high olec safflower oil, whey protein concentrate, medium chain triglyceride, coconut oil, and then less than 2% of schizo... Schizotyrum? I don't know. Oh, oil. You, you can stop there. Okay. You, it, you it goes on and on and on. Yeah. You, are, you had already mentioned maybe two or three seed oils before yeah. you went back to that. Two and, seed oils and a corn syrup are the first four. Yeah. And, 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 you know, wow. Wow. And we're wondering what's going on. Right. Well, to that point, I know we don't have a ton of time. Um, I will leave the name out of it because it, they're, they're, I had a wonderful time. It was a wonderful company. But I couldn't help but pick up my phone to text you over the weekend because I went to a giant water park mm -hmm. in California and I was so shocked by something I had to text you right away. It wasn't the adult, you know, adults, you're kind of used to seeing it. I was so taken aback by the amount of obesity in the children. I had to text you and I'm not being glib. I'm telling you full breasts on these boys, yeah. full breasts breasts and it was very very jarring and i you know we're all used to seeing heavy adults and we you know we get it but seeing the kids like this all packed into one event space was shocking it's what i've been yelling about on this podcast for about 12 years now you know and uh, you know i mentioned being on a beach in florida in northern florida or as we like to call it eastern alabama um <laughs> Because there's that Florida Bama, you know, right, a right, little desk yeah. is right there. I told Serena quietly, I, you know, we we're sitting under our umbrella. I said, find the lean kid. Find, find one. Find one. Find one. It, you know, 
And she started picking kids out and went, okay, put that kid back in 1985. That would have been the fattest kid. That would have been the fattest kid. We were trying to find kids who were of average obesity. Yeah. And it was sad. Yeah. It was sad. And then we started looking at parents and said, find, find a lean parent. And the best we got with that was a couple of parents that looked like they went to the gym where the chest did actually stick out, mm -hmm. and got stuck out, you know, like they had some chest and the whole thing. You could tell where they had like fat over the muscle. Right. But still, they had the fat. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I, I mean, you know so much more about this than I do, you know, in terms of how we got that way and school lunches and what you're eating at home and blah, blah, blah. In fact, I have a, a story I'm dying to tell you in the next show. But um, you don't, you, the parents don't seem phased. It's just, it is. I mean, these boys, and I'm not talking about body shaming. I'm not, I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about boys who don't seem phased at all in their swim trunks, shirtless with full breasts, very normal. There, no thoughts about it. And the girls, you know, a lot of big girls too, but the, the, the tops on the boys were just really well, jarring. Uh, th there's, all right, there's a video has been seen millions and millions of times. It's about 90 minutes long and you will be riveted the entire time. You can watch it for free on YouTube. It's probably been out for 10 or 12 years. It's called Sugar, the Bitter Truth by Dr. Robert Lustig. He was talking to a group of doctors. Robert Lustig is probably one of the foremost authorities in the world on childhood obesity. And he's talking to a group of doctors and you would go, wow, that sounds like 90 minutes of snooze time. Mm -hmm. You will be riveted. I remember I was with, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna half name drop here. Please do. I, I was with um, Howie Mandel's wife, Terry. And oh, nothing. Terry and I were talking about this. And I said, Terry, you got to watch this. And she goes, Yeah, yeah, I'll get to it. I said, Terry, just from the way you said that, you, you just blew me off. She goes, No, 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 I'll watch it. I went, No, you said no four times. Just on no, 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 you're not gonna watch it. Whenever people I, I, I can read when people are bullshitting. And uh, I said, when you tell me that I've got to see a Hallmark movie, I'll get right on it. Yeah, yeah, I know the way your voice went up that you will never <laughs> turn on the Hallmark channel. Right? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I said, Terry, I tell you what, here's the deal. Let's go over. She had a computer in her kitchen, like the big screen with the, right. with the you know, desk. Thing. Big I monitor. Said, yeah. Because uh, Terry doesn't cook. So the kitchen has to be used for something. <laughs> oh, and and uh, so, I mean, they have like a beautiful stove, like, you know, the big oh. thing. The, oh, the, breaks the, my heart. And the whole thing. I said, Terry, you know how to turn it on? She has no idea. Okay. No, none whatsoever. And um, here we look like homesteaders. I would kill for that stove. Oh yeah. She's got like the Viking, you know, the oh. um, so I said, Terry, here's the deal. I'm going to pull it up for you and you and I will watch five minutes together. And then at five minutes, you, you'll have it up. And I just want you to promise me, let's go watch it. She goes, okay, all right, whatever. You know, I hate you. You just go in the kitchen. 20 minutes later, she I said, we could turn it off now. And she goes, No, 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 we ended up. So I said, You know what, I'm just gonna stay here. And I waited another 15 minutes to say, you can watch the rest. Later. No, 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 no. I had to leave the house to go to my next client. Wow. She watched the whole thing. That's how riveting this is. The reason I bring up Robert Lustig is because after that became and he's been on this show before. Yeah, yeah. Robert went off to do a book, wrote a book about the whole thing. And in his book, I'll never forget, he goes, we now see six and seven year old girls with what looks like breast. But because, you know, it's a sensitive subject, we can't go wait, is that just fat where breasts are going to be? Or are those mammary glands growing? So we can't really, you know, it's hard for medicine to, right, tell to get to the bottom hey, of this. Yeah. We're trying to see if your seven year old has actual breast or if that's fat. But the same thing is happening with boys. They're getting so much estrogen, they're eating so much junk that between the estrogen and the junk, they're developing breasts. And it, it got, this is just reminding me of so many studies I have coming down the hopper for the next couple of shows. But that's the thing. It's like, is will, and you talked about this how many times? This stuff is so not regulated. It, it's not even not, it's that it's not regulated, it's being pushed 
by, yeah. you know, big processed food and blah, blah, blah. Somebody said this, and I know you'd agree. Somebody said, I think all lobbyists need to wear their sponsors like patches, like a NASCAR driver. So we really know what we're dealing with. Well, the only problem with that is there's not that much shirt space. <laughs> you know, that's how many sponsors there are. I mean, we should bring it up in the show, Gina. Uh, you know what? Write this down for the next time we podcast. Not okay. that I, I know we're doing a few shows here today. Um, I want you to come up with the 10 top sponsors for the AHA, the American Heart Association, and the 10 top sponsors for the ADA. Okay. American Diabetes Association. And get ready to be shocked. I I will because I can't imagine that would be much of anything. J just be ready to be shocked. Okay. Writing this and down. Got it. Names like Coca Cola. Stop. Like Mars. Names like PepsiCo. I will confirm this, everybody, before I need to shout out these things. Go on. Go okay. on. Go look at it. You're going to. You, you will be, you know, then you're going to go, oh, this is why it's in the schools. Oh, this is why they're telling me this is heart healthy for my kid and this and that and the whole thing. Well, okay. and I mean, the thing, it's just, you know, we talk about this all the time, but I always laugh when I read the lunch menu to my stepson and go, you know, I'm packing his lunch and I go, uh, so just so you know, tomorrow is macaroni and cheese and corn muffin or breaded chicken sandwich and French fries. Those are the choice or cheese pizza. I want cheese pizza. I want, and like I've said a million times, we don't have the control over it that we used to because it's free. Yeah. We had a lunch ticket we had to pay for. So if there was no money on our lunch ticket, you're just whatever, but right. it's free. So that choice is kind of being taken away from us. Cause I don't have to give him lunch money. I it, pack it, his lunch. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, look, FYI. The, whole thing, the whole thing is, is just so sad and so, and, you know, I was just talking, if you go back one week, you'll hear Gary Tobbs on a Friday show. And, you know, Gary and I go way back. And he's written a gazillion books on the subject. And and because he, he comments on science and he goes from a scientific approach, he always says, and he says in the podcast again, and if you watch us and you see his face and my face, you can see where he's, he knows that I'm not really putting up with his shit and, I, and he's not putting up with mine because that's the relationship we have. <laughs> but he goes, I'm not as, as cynical as you are. I don't think it's so sinister. Right. And he goes, but I'm the only one. He goes, all of the other, all of my friends in science and everywhere else, they'll say, Gary, you got to come around on this because how can it be any other way? Money gets involved. Yeah. Go, I will point out you, 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 unlocked one core memory when you just said that, which is how many times has it had it been brought up on the Adam Carolla show in the eight years I was there in the seven and a half years you were there probably still going on that when they would talk about big pharma and pushing, you know, uh, um, opioids and all this stuff, Dr. Drew saying to Adam over and over again, there is no way they're doing this on purpose. Big pharma does not want people addicted to their pills. And Adam would go, are you crazy? Listen to that. Yeah. Of course they do. And then Dr. Drew finally going, oh, my God, you're right. Oh, my God. Yeah, Drew wants to believe the best in everyone. Sure. I, look, I mean, there were times, one of the things that um, they would try to do to me on the Adam Carolla show is hit me with something on the air. Always. You know, um, they would say, we're going to talk about A, B, C, and D, and then we get on the air and they, they're talking about F, G, H, Z, mm -hmm. everything except what they told me we were going to talk uh -huh. about. And one time, you know, they brought up, you know, a pasta study. I don't know if you remember this. I'm just. Oh, I do remember this. And they were like, you know, pasta is heart healthy. Pasta is this pop. And, and they were going, with Vinny, this is exactly the opposite of <laughs> I what was you there said. For this. And do you remember what I said? I do. It changed the way I look at every study. You said, who sponsored the study? We're like, we don't know, but here's the study. Yeah. So I had, you know, in real time, Chris or Gary, whoever yep. was in the booth, went to the bottom of the study, and it was it was sponsored by Barilla, the yeah. biggest pasta maker in the world. <laughs> That's crazy. And, and it was saying that, hey, this study claims that everything we make is the healthiest thing in the world. Yeah. Come on. 
That's where we yeah, are. I mean, that was that changed me. It really did. As a as someone who, you know, I won't say a reporter, but as someone who reports on the news pretty much daily, that changed me for the better. And I thank you for that because um it's a very important question that is not always listed in the article. And I think there's a reason for that. Yeah. They won't list it in the article, but you'll find it somewhere. It's buried. Yeah. And luckily, Gary or, or um, uh, Chris, Chris or, or one yeah. of them, they, they, they went and they, they, oh my God, it's right here. Yeah. Uh, folks, the other thing that, that's right there is Gina Grad, my <laughs> extra family on Instagram. That's right. Go check this out. Go on. Yeah, Gina. thank you. It, there's lots of fun stuff. In fact, there's something I want to bring up from at the next show, and it has to do with a comment of somebody who follows you. So it's a really interesting tie-in. At My Extra Family on Instagram, please follow me there. Parenting, uh, all kinds of parenting stuff. And you can get my book, My Extra Mom. It's a children's book about step families. You can get that on Amazon. But of course, we don't go right to Amazon. We go to VinnieTortorich.com. We click on the banner and then we grab it. Doesn't cost you anything, but helps uh, Vinny and I out. Since Gina said all of that, I will tell you guys, don't forget to rate and review this podcast. Very, very important. Uh, what I told Brian on our Brian and Gina show, I said, if you're, if you hate listen to us and you want to be part of the review process, just go scream into your pillow. Please stay out of it. I tell them to take a knee. Just, just take a knee. Take a little time <laughs> off. Low, low, take a little you time. Take a little you time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You don't need any me time on that. Take you time. That's all right, right. So folks. Um, sometimes I feel like I'm all by myself out here. Oh, so boy. on behalf of Gina Grad, my name is Vinny Totterich. Put life into living and let's do it with a little bit more of Eric Carmen. <laughs>